when you got your own production studio at the crib because you starting off real humble and you just trying to make stuff work. <laughs> All right. What's up, everybody? My name is Ayana Janae, and this is my not-so-genius lyrical breakdown. For all the people at home, give me a little snap. Hey. Grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change. Change, baby. The courage to accept the things I can. And the wisdom to know the difference. The first verse of Divine Timing is actually the Prayer of Serenity. And I first heard the Prayer of Serenity um, on one of my favorite albums of all time. It's called Testimonies, Life, and Relationships by Indy Ari. And I love that prayer because that prayer is about a couple of things. So first you ask for serenity uh, for the things you can't control. You ask for, for courage for the things that you can. And then you ask for wisdom uh, to be able to use your spirit of discernment on the two. It's like, okay, now I'm capable of saying this is something I can control um, and this is something that I cannot. And I just love that. I got a vision floating in my mind. I'm gonna find it. That chorus is really just giving me confidence and putting confidence and fire back into myself and being like, it might take a longer path or you might take a longer time to accomplish your goals, but baby, we got divine timing because we got God on our side and nothing that we do is on our own accord. So we have confidence and faith that, you know, even though it might not be happening right now today, the way I want it to, it's gonna happen. What's meant for me will get to me eventually. I won't sweat it. Until the day I'll preparate to receive it, no my blessings. Come on. Like, okay. What's meant for me will get to me eventually. I won't sweat it. Self-explanatory. I'll let it stay here. Until that day, I'll preparate to receiving all my blessings. Like being able to live in expectancy of your blessing is one of those things that like it's hard as an artist to live in expectancy, especially when you get told no so many times, you get turned away, rejected. But I just wanna encourage artists to continue to prepare for your blessing, even when it doesn't seem like it's within reach, um, and especially when it doesn't seem possible. Um, I want you to be the person to continue to prepare, keep your head down, do whatever it is that you know you need to do to one day being able to receive that blessing because eventually preparation will meet opportunity. And the last thing I want anybody, including myself, to do is sulk in their own demise or allow um, things that they thought were for them um, and the no's that they didn't receive to diminish them and make them think, well, I guess this isn't, this isn't for me. This isn't the life that I'm supposed to live. It absolutely could be, love. You just have to continue to strive for that life, strive for that thing that you see in your mind and say, okay, it might not happen today, but I'm gonna continue to work hard. I'm gonna continue to grind. I'm gonna continue to put all my love and my energy into what I feel like I was meant to do on this earth. And don't think that you always have to prepare in people's presence. Don't always assume that you have to prepare in the spaces of social media so that you can stay on people's mind or stay on people's radar. No, sweetie. No. You do what you need to do for yourself so when that blessing actually does come, you're not looking goofy. You think I'm going too slow or want to tortoise you to hair for sure, but silly rabbit, I do not care. But what gets funny is when people start to project their own worries and fears onto you. So they start feeling like, I'm gonna take off without you because I can do it faster without you or you taking too long, so it's not gonna happen for you. So let's get into the story of the tortoise and the hare and why I put that line in the second verse. 
So the story is a fable and it's about the tortoise and the hare who decided to have a race in the forest. And all of the animals in the forest knew about this race. So they all, you know what I'm saying, placed their bets in and was like putting all their money on the hare because obviously a tortoise versus a rabbit, like, come on now, like in, immediately in your mind, you're like the rabbit's gonna win. So anyways, basically throughout the story, uh, the race is happening and basically the hare because the hare obviously is underestimating his opponent he's like I'm the hare like everybody got their bets on me like I'm clearly the obvious choice and um he decides that he can take a couple of detours in this race right so the race starts and obviously the tortoise is going just as slow as ever and like creeping up you know the hair is like i'm gonna just take a couple of different paths or whatever to prove the point that i can win and take a detour and do all of these things and still beat you at the end the hair is like i'm gonna go ahead and just cross the finish line it's been cute but when he finally gets a sight when he gets an eye view of the finish line he notices that the tortoise is like almost there and he's like oh hell no that's not how this going down by the time the hare gets to the finish line the tortoise has already crossed now everybody in the forest pissed off and confused how the tortoise won but the moral of the story is slow and steady wins the race so after having conversations about my artistry how long it's taken me to get to a certain point claiming victory over the naysayers, over the people that don't believe in you, even the the monster in your mind that's telling you that you couldn't do it or you can't do it or whatever, like just overcoming that and seeing all of that behind you in your rear view mirror, like that's, I really got bars, don't sleep on me, okay, please? So the bridge is like, even time Addressing when I say lit a fire under my feet, I'm addressing any and every strand of doubt, strand of fear, strand of um, disappointment, strand of disapproval, even rejection. I'm saying that all of those things encompassed into one, including my own procrastination, my own self doubt, my own fears. Um, I'm lighting a fire under. It's really saying like I am protecting my energy. I'm guarding my space. And if you decide to disrupt the rhythm and the groove that I got going within myself, goodbye. Um, you gotta go. Sewing up these loose seams, meaning I am taking responsibility and ownership and what I have not done to be able to receive the blessing. I'm acknowledging all the things that have made me feel inferior. Um, I'm acknowledging ego. I'm acknowledging doubt. I'm acknowledging all of the negative things, releasing them, and I'm patching up everything around me that I know is meant for me, that I know that I need. I need to speak life into myself. I need to surround myself with people that are like-minded and driven and God-fearing and all of these things. It may feel like your darkest hours are going to consume you, but they're not. And I want to encourage you to lean into your faith and to be bold and be brilliant because all of your blessings are going to come to you in divine time. All right, y'all. That was my lyrical breakdown. You can find my new single, Divine Timing, only on SoundCloud. Unless y'all run that thing up, then I'll put it on other social media platforms or streaming platforms and all that good stuff.